All right, everyone, welcome to today's faculty webinar series. It's our second to last session, so thank you for joining us today. And today we have Cindy, uh, who's going to walk us through CINAHL and Science Full Text Select. As a reminder, um, you will receive a certificate of attendance for attending this live today, and anyone who is registered will receive the link to the recording, but the recording will be publicly available on our YouTube page. As with all of our databases, you can find this in our A to Z resource list on the library's website. Uh, Cindy, feel free to take it away and I will be back at the end for Q&A. Thank you very much, Megan, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for your time today. So let me share my screen. And just before I, uh, I start the, the presentation, just to introduce myself, as Megan said, my name is Cindy Slater. I'm a senior training specialist with EBSCO. I've been with EBSCO for over six years now, started off in our office in Melbourne, Australia, and moved to the US in 2019. And uh, today I'm coming to you from my home office in Boston. Uh, my background is in healthcare. Prior to being a, a trainer, I was a, a health professional in Australia. I was a podiatrist for over 10 years, and I also worked in the NHS in the UK as a podiatrist. But uh, I've retired my scalpel now. I no longer, you know, uh, go to the feet, uh, look at the feet, uh, and I now do training on our medical resources. And I've got a long history with EBSCO resources because when I was a podiatrist, um, CINAHL is one of my go-to research databases. So, uh, you know, I've got a real um, you know, soft spot for this particular database. So I'm going to switch off my camera now and then we'll start the session. Now, as Tracy mentioned, we have got time in this session for questions and answers. So if you do have questions, please send them through via the chat box and we'll uh, go through them in the Q&A towards the end of today's session. So in today's session, we're going to go through some search tips, a refresher on some search tips, and then move across into a live demonstration. We'll do some basic searching, some advanced searching, Look at some of the limiters and filters that you can use to refine your search and focus the results. Look at how you can set up alerts. You can set up search alerts and get notified anytime there's new content added to the database that matches your search. So it's a great way to keep abreast of any new research. And you can also set up publication alerts. So if there's maybe one of your go-to journals, uh, you'd like to get notified anytime there's a new issue of that uh, journal added to the database, you can set up a publication alert. We'll talk about the personal folder. So this is where you can save things to and come back and access in another session, whether it be articles or searches, or you can manage your alerts from the personal folder. And I'd also like to cover, cover some of the additional content that's found in the CINAHL Complete Database, uh, particularly the evidence-based care sheets, the quick lessons, and also the continuing education units that are found. We'll talk about how to search for publications, and this is where you can see the coverage that you have for publications in the databases, and we'll finish off today's session on EBSCO Connect. This is our knowledge base. This is where you can find takeaway guides, you can find tutorials, links to upcoming training sessions, plus more, so uh, definitely worth visiting EBSCO Connect. The learning objectives for this session, by the end of the session, participants will be able to access the interface with ease, search and locate an article of interest, use some of these special features as, such as the alerts and the personal folder, and then also know where to go to find the tutorials and promotional materials on EBSCO Connect. So in this session, we're going to focus on two of the research databases that you have access to at the library. You've got access to CINAHL Complete. Um, I don't know if everyone, anyone is, is aware of what CINAHL stands for. It is the Cumulative Index to Nursing and Allied Health Literature, a very popular, a very highly regarded database for nursing and allied health. This database has full text for nearly 1400 journals indexed in CINAHL and full text coverage dating back to 1937. In terms of the, the subjects that it covers, it covers nursing, biomedicine, alternative complementary medicine, um, and also 17 allied health disciplines plus more. Within the database, you also have uh, access to books, dissertations, conference proceedings. There's the educational software that we'll talk about when we look at this continuing education units, uh, book chapters plus more. And the other database you have access to or that we're going to focus on uh, today is Science Full Text Select. So this database has full text for more than 400 journals dating back to 1994, and it covers a range of different subject areas. Now, both of these databases are searched on what's called EBSCOhost. 
So the way I'm going to structure this session is we're going to do some searching across both databases first, just to uh, go through some of the functionality that's available on EBSCOhost. And then I'm going to spend some time, time looking at some of the special features in CINAHL, and then we'll have a look at some of the special features in uh, Science Full, Full Text Select. When you are searching, some things that can help you with your search construction. First of all, we can make use of the Boolean operators, so and, or, and not, to broaden, to uh, narrow, to omit a term from the search. Using and will narrow the search. Diabetes and obesity will retrieve references that have both terms. Using or will broaden. Diet or nutrition will retrieve references that have either of these terms. And using not will omit a term from the search. Now you can use these in uppercase or lowercase, basic searching or advanced searching. And we'll definitely make use of some of these in today's session. Now, some other things that can help you on the searching interface. First of all, you can make use of the asterisk. This is a truncational word stemming device. Rather than typing in different variations of a word, you can type in that word stem in the asterisk and that will retrieve different endings to that word stem. So the example they give there is dyslexia will retrieve dyslexia will retrieve dyslexia dyslexic or if we think of the word stem m-a-n-a-g asterisk will retrieve manage managing management the single character wildcard of a question mark will insert a different letter in place of where the question mark sits the multiple character wildcard of the hash will look for nothing in place of the hash and then also a letter in place of the hash. And a popular way to use this wildcard is when there's a difference between US and UK spelling of words, color, behavior, pediatric, etc. And the last tip is to use quotation marks for phrase searching. So if you'd like to retrieve references that have these terms next to each other and in this exact order, place the terms in quotation marks. Now, I can make these slides available uh, to, to Megan after the session if you'd like to access them. So let's move across to the searching interface. So here we are on what's called the EBSCO host interface. And this is where you can choose which EBSCO databases you are searching. I'm going to focus on both databases to begin with. But you have got this link here, choose databases. And this is where you can see all of the different EBSCO databases that you have access to. Also on this page, if you click on detailed view, this is where you can see the publication information. So let's go down to C for CINAHL. If you click on more information, so this is where you can see the database information. So this is where I can see the database help for, uh, for this database. So I can see information about the searchable fields. I can see information about the, the search tags, the description of each of the fields, an example of each of these um, fields in action. You can also see information here about the subject headings and some of the special limiters. It's a very useful uh, document, the database help. So that's found on choose databases. And then if you go to the select database, I'll just make sure I've still got them selected. Okay. So we started here on the advanced search screen. So you've got the three rows. So if you have got a search that's got some complexity to it, you can space out different elements of the search on different rows. You can make use of the Boolean operators between rows. And we can also make use of the field options here. Let's start off with our first search. I'm going to do a search for, let's do something topical, so COVID-19 vaccine. And I'm searching both databases at the moment. I won't select a field just yet, but let's have a look at some of the search options that are available. The search mode here is Boolean phrase, so it means you can do a Boolean search, but we'll also search for something as a phrase without having to use quotation marks. If you change it to find all my search terms, that will place and between your search terms. Find any will place all between your search terms. On the right, there are some expanders and we've got an expander in place here, apply equivalent subjects. And this is quite a useful expander. The way this works is uh, based on what you type in, if your keyword is mapped to a concept and then headings from a controlled vocabulary, it will bring forth articles with that, sub with those, that subject heading. So for instance, somebody searches for heart attack, it's going to bring articles with the subject heading of myocardial infarction. So this is quite a, a useful expander to have in place. 
So let's click on search. Now I've done a broad search here and I've got over 1600 results across the two databases. If you are searching a very broad topic, I would always encourage you to add in another element. What is it about this topic that interests you? Is it a particular age group, a particular gender, a particular intervention? Anything that you can build into the search is gonna make it a little bit more focused. So let me add in one more search term here, COVID-19 vaccine and distribution. And if we now have a look at the search results, you can see just by adding in another element there, we've got a much more focused result list. So still a good number of results to work with, uh, but I'm closer to the articles of most interest. Now results are sorted by date by relevance. And this is looking at things like matches in the subjects of the article, matches in the title of the article, matches in the abstract, the author's applied keywords, the length the type and the currency of the document. And all of those factors in the background determine this sort order. So hopefully you find the results of most interest at the top of your results list. And then down the left hand side of the page, this is where we can further refine this. So maybe you are looking for results where there's some kind of link to full text. You can apply the full text limiter. Uh, not surprisingly, my results for COVID-19 are all from 2020 onwards, but uh, very likely if you do a search for another topic, you're gonna to have results that you know, date further back in the past. And at this point, you may choose to restrict your search results to maybe results published in the last five years or three years or you know, 12 months, uh, whichever publication date range you'd select. The source types filter here, this is a very, quick way to navigate to the type of content that you're looking for. Maybe you are looking for results that come from academic journals or results that are from magazines or conference proceedings. You can find them via this source types filter. And then continuing down the page, we have more filter options here. We can filter by subjects, we can filter by uh, publisher language, we can filter by gender. If you select Female doesn't mean that every person in the study has to be female, it just means that there has to be at one least one female in the study. And we can also filter by geography. And this is going to be the place of publication. Now, for each of these filters, uh, you will see you'll have, well, apart from gender here, but um, we've got six options here. But if you click on show more, it will bring up more options. And from here, we can sort by A to Z, and we can also sort by hit count number of results. And the last filter here is database, and it's telling us where these results are coming from. For this search, the majority of the results come from Simul Complete, but we also have some results that come from Social Sciences Full Text. So hopefully that is familiar with you already. You've done some searching here on the interface. Um, so do your search. I would encourage you to give the search some kind of focus. If you choose to apply any of those, the, some limiters and filters, some limiters before you click on search, you can go ahead and do so. But you've also got options to the limiters and the filters from the results list. Now, once you've found an article of interest, you can um, view the full text if it's available. I can see this article is available in both PDF and HTML. I can see that this article comes from Synol Complete. When I click on the PDF full text, I can view the full text, I can read it on screen, I can print it from here, and you also have tools to work with the full text from here. So you can uh, email it, you can add it to your personal folder. There's a site tool, which is a very popular tool. Say you use APA format, it's simply a case of doing a copy and paste. Now these are machine generated, so I'd always encourage you to do a double check on things like capitalizations and dates, but definitely a great time saver. And there's also the export manager if you'd like to export. And the last tool here is the permalink. And this is a great way to share something. Maybe you'd like to share this with the students, copy this permalink, you can um, send the link to the students. Now, when somebody clicks on the link, if they are authenticated, so it recognise they are part of the university, they'll be able to access the full text of the article. And also on this page, we can see we can access other articles in this issue. We can choose another issue of this publication. We can view the HTML full text. And this is also where we can view the detailed record. Now, if I clicked on the title of the article from the results page, I'd be taken to this detailed record page as well. The detailed record page shows us all of the particulars of the article. We can see information about the authors, the publication or the source. We can see the subjects that have been assigned. And we'll talk a bit more about subjects later on in the session, but the subjects describe the content of the article. 
major subjects are what the article is primarily about and minor subjects are any side topics. I can see the abstract and I can see some other particulars. On the right hand side, I've also got tools to work with it. And whenever you've got something available in HTML format, you've got a couple of additional tools. Uh, you've got the listen tool, uh, you can even select an accent if you'd like, and you can download this in MP3 format. And you also have the translate tool. So there's a number of different languages that you can translate this into. So look out for those two additional tools whenever you've got an article available in HTML full text. Okay, so let's make our way back to the results list. So if you do have any questions as we go along, please send them through in the chat. We'll, we'll bank them um, and then we will uh, we'll, we'll go back to them at the end of it. We'll, we'll view them at the end of the session. We'll go through them at the end of the session. Okay, so that's the first search, but let's look at ways that we can uh, do some more targeted searching, some more sort of power searching, some advanced techniques. If we revisit this search, let me remove distribution here, and let's just go for a search here about COVID-19 vaccine. So doing a keyword search for COVID-19 vaccine, you can see I've got over 1,600 results. When we make when we um, don't select a field, we say that's an unqualified search. When you select a field, we call that a qualified search. And doing qualified searches is a way that you can make your searching, your results list more targeted. Let's compare the number of results if we choose some of these field, uh, field options. Now let's have a look at title field. So I'm looking for articles where COVID-19 vaccine is in the title. So you can see that we've got 381 results or maybe you are looking for results where COVID-19 vaccine is in the subjects. So the subjects describe the content of the article, or maybe you're looking for COVID-19 in the abstract. So just making use of these field options is a way to make your results list more focused. Now at the moment I'm searching across both databases. So I've got a short list of field options, but let's Choose, choose databases and let's have a look at the field options for the individual databases. So now I'm just going to look at CINAHL Complete. And if we have a look at the field options now when I'm just searching CINAHL by itself, you can see that there's a long list of different field options here. Lots of field options around subject headings. And this is where that database help that I showed a little earlier comes in handy. This helps uh, you know, give a definition of what each of these field options is. There's an author affiliation. Maybe you're looking for any research where there's an author affiliation, um, say with George Washington University Hospital. So let's search for George Washington University Hospital author affiliation, click on search. And looking at these results, if we have a look at the detailed record, we'll see that at least one of the authors has got an affiliation with George Washington University Hospital. Looking at some of the other field options here, uh, grant information, maybe you're looking for research that's used light a particular grant, or maybe you're looking for research that has you know, referenced a particular research instrument, a, a scale or a survey or a questionnaire. Uh, for instance, uh, maybe you're interested in any research that's used the mini mental state examination or MMSE instrumentation. Let's add in another element here. Uh, add in another element to make the search a little bit more focused. So mini, mate stent, mini mental state examination as the research instrument. And I've added another element there of dementia. Uh, if we have a look at the detailed record, we can see instrumentation and I can see that the mini mental state examination is listed here. So it's a very popular uh, field. So definitely worth exploring the different field options. Let's have a look at the field options for science select. So let's go back to choose databases, science select full text. So these are the field options. So this has its own database help. So uh, you can see the different definitions of different field options here, but definitely worth exploring the different field options. So that's one way that you can make your searching more focused. Another way is to make use of the limiters. 
Now, there are some common limiters, so things like full text, references available, peer review that are common across both databases, but then there are some special limiters. Here are some special limiters for science full text. And you can see here with CINAHL Complete, there are a number of special limiters. And the limiters reflect the type of content that sits in the database. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every one, but there's just a couple that I would like to highlight. So first of all, there's a limiter called the evidence-based practice limiter. This is a great way to easily navigate to that evidence-based practice content within the database. When you apply this limiter and you add in your keywords, you limit your results to articles from evidence-based practice journals, articles about evidence-based practice, research articles, and also commentaries on research studies. There's another limiter called the clinical queries limiter. And these are search strategies or hedges um, that you can apply to retrieve relevant and sound results. For those of you who search in Medline, you may be familiar with clinical queries. There are also clinical queries as a limiter in the Medline database. Now here in CINAHL, there are five different strategies. Therapy, prognosis, review, qualitative and causation. And for each of these, there are three different approaches. So there's high sensitivity, which is the broadest search, high specificity, which is the targeted search, and best balance, which is a balance between sensitivity and specificity. Now, on our EBSCO Connect site, there is a help article about the clinical queries that will actually detail the search strategies that are, that are used for each of these clinical queries. And I'll make sure to point that out later on in the session when we visit EBSCO Connect. So let's go back to the limiters. Here's the evidence-based practice limiter. So let's do an example here. Evidence-based practice. Um, I'm interested in anything, say, around hand hygiene. I'm going to make use of the all text field. So that's going to search all of CINA or all of the databases searchable fields. It will also search the full text as well. So with the limiter in place, we've got, um, maybe I shouldn't have used the full text limiter. Maybe let, let me, quite a number of results. Let's just go back without the all text. So without the all text, so not searching the full text, so searching the subjects and the title, et cetera, 392 results with the limiter in place. And if we have a look at these results, um, sorry, let's just focus on the CINAHL ones. If we have a look at the results from CINAHL, we'll have a look at why some of these results appeared in the results list. So looking at these results, so I can see this one here is a systematic review. I can see this re result here is a systematic review. This result here is a systematic review. So I can see why these results have appeared in the list. Um, if I remove that limiter of evidence-based practice, my apologies, I don't know, I've got bumped out. Let me do that again. Has anyone used the limiter option? So while I'm quickly getting back there again. Okay, so. Uh, hand hygiene. So with the limiter in place, you know, a short, a small number of results, but without the limiter in place, you know, you'd have, you know, quite a number of results. Let's just quickly do this search without the limiter in place but across the, you know, both databases, but you can have a significant difference in the number of results there. So I would encourage you to explore that limiter there. So sorry that I got timed out there in the middle of that uh, demonstration there, but I would encourage you to explore. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other limiters in place. There's a limiter here for the continuing education modules. Here's the clinical queries limiter. First author is a nurse. Any author is a nurse. Maybe you're looking for randomized control trials. There are also a number of journal subsets. Rather than searching all of the titles in the database, maybe you'd like to select a particular subset of titles. Uh, I did a training session for a, a nursing college, a 
last year. And the, the librarian uh, said, uh, let me know that when the nurses, nursing students were doing an assignment, the nursing students were utilizing the, a couple of these journal subsets here, core nursing and the nursing subset. And that was helping to make their search result list much more focused. Now on EBSCO Connect, there is a link to a, a spreadsheet that will detail the titles that sit in each of these journal subsets. There's the geographic subset, that's place of publication. And then further down, we've got inpatients, outpatients, another way to, you can make your results uh, more focused. And the last one here, the special interest. And again, we've got an Excel spreadsheet that will detail the titles that sit in each of these subsets. So do explore the different limiter options that are available. So quite a number in CINAHL, uh, and then also you've got some here available in Science Full Text Select. Okay. Now, so far, we've been doing keyword searching, and that's definitely a very popular way to search. However, you can also search using the controlled vocabularies. And each of these databases has its own controlled vocabulary or thesaurus. And when articles are indexed and added to the database, they are assigned one or more headings from the controlled vocabulary and the headings describe the content of the article. So when we search using these headings, it makes for a very targeted search. You are retrieving results that have been deemed to be about that topic. It can also be an efficient way to search as well. Maybe what you are searching for could be described by many different keywords, and all of those keywords could be captured by the one subject heading. Now in CINAHL, the controlled vocabulary is called CINAHL headings. Uh, these are based on MeSH, and then there are additional headings added around nursing and allied health. Now this controlled vocabulary is updated on an annual basis towards the end of the calendar year. And we have got a help article available on um, EBSCO Connect about searching using subject CINAHL, CINAHL subject headings. Now there are different ways that you can approach a search when you are doing subject heading searching. But in today's session, I'm going to go through probably the most popular approach. If you're interested in a deep dive into searching using subject headings, um, please reach out to Megan. I'm also always happy to schedule another call where we can spend maybe half an hour going through lots of different techniques to search using subject headings. But the most popular approach is to consider your search topic, identify the different elements in your search topic, search those elements individually, and then use your search history to combine your searches. So if we consider this topic here, hypoglycemia in patients who have type 1 diabetes and who use an insulin pump, there are three elements. So I'm going to do three separate searches and then use my search history to combine the searches. So to access the controlled vocabulary, we'll go up here to CINAHL subject headings and we can Choose how we browse the controlled vocabulary. Term begins with term contains or relevancy ranked. So the first element in my search topic is hypoglycemia. So let me search for hypoglycemia. And that's just remembered it from when I prepared this search earlier. Uh, and let's click on browse. So we have got a heading here in the controlled vocabulary of hypoglycemia. And I can select it from here. And very importantly, if I'd like to broaden my search, I can also search for hypoglycemia as a keyword from here as well. Now, before I click on it, I'm actually going to click or well, select it from here. But I'm going to actually click on the heading itself. And when we click on the heading, we get taken into what's called the tree view. And this is where you can see where this heading sits in the controlled vocabulary. And I can see that hypoglycemia sits under a broader heading of metabolic diseases, which sits under a broader heading of nutritional and metabolic diseases. And I can see that narrower to hypoglycemia, we've got a heading of insulin coma. So you can see that's coming off hypoglycemia. Now, when I select the heading, you'll notice that there is a checkbox here. This is a checkbox that says explode. And exploding a term means that you broaden your search. You are searching not only for articles with this subject heading, but for this one as well, using the or Boolean. So in this case, I'm searching for articles with the subject heading of hypoglycemia or insulin coma. So exploding means that you capture the narrower headings with the or Boolean. The next checkbox here is if you'd like it to be a major concept, 
you can select that and you can see that we've got a number of subheadings. So you can select one or more subheadings at this point to restrict your search. So maybe you're looking for articles with a subject heading of hypoglycemia and a subheading of education or a subheading of nursing. Uh, you can make your selection from here. And to the bottom of this list, you can see some related headings and what it's used for. So let's go ahead and search. So searching the database for articles with the subject heading of hypoglycemia or insulin coma, we've got over 10,000 results. Let's go back and search the second element, type one diabetes. So searching type one diabetes here in CINAHL headings, we have got a subject heading. Uh, again, we've got the option to select it as a keyword if it, as well. And when we click on the heading, we get taken into that tree view. Now you don't always have to go into the tree view, but I like to go into the tree view. Uh, from here, you might choose at this point, you may choose to broaden your search or narrow your search, or maybe you'll find some other headings that you'd also like to include in your search from here. I can select diabetes mellitus from here. It sits under a broader heading of, um, sorry, type one diabetes. It's under a broader heading of diabetes mellitus, a broader heading of metabolic diseases, a broader heading of nutritional and metabolic diseases. You'll sometimes find headings in more than one place in the controlled vocabulary. And here it sits under a broader heading of diabetes mellitus, but a broader heading here of glucose metabolism disorders. And in this instance, on this branch of the tree, we've got a narrower heading here of Wolfram syndrome. So for this subject heading, I have got the option to explode. So now I'm going to search for articles with the subject heading of diabetes mellitus type 1 or Wolfram syndrome. You don't have to explode, but um, sometimes it, you may choose to broaden at this point. Again, we've got the subheadings, and then we've got that in information at the bottom here. I always find this information at the bottom here quite interesting, what it's used for. I can see when this um, was added to the controlled vocabulary and some uh, other information here. So that's the second element of our search topic. And looking at this element, we've got 26,000 results. I can see this one's got the subject heading of diabetes mellitus. Um, and let's go back to the third element. Third element is insulin pump. So it's telling me that for here for insulin pump, use the heading of insulin infusion system. We have got a scope note here on the right hand side. Scope note details what this heading covers. So it helps you decide if this is the most appropriate heading for your search. And again, if you want to view that tree view, you can do so. Now you'll notice that in both places where this sits in the controlled vocabulary, there's no narrower heading. So we don't have the option to explode. So let's search the third element. So now we've got our three searches and let's go to the search history to combine those searches. Now, my search topic was a very simple search topic. I only had the three elements in there. If your search has more complexity, add in as many subject headings as you need to cover your search topic. But from this search history page, let's combine search to hypoglycemia or its narrower term, search three, diabetes mellitus or Wolfram syndrome and search for insulin infusion system. And let's combine them with the AND Boolean. So combining all three of those searches, we've got 470 results and we can go ahead and we can work with these results. If you really like this result list, why not use the share button to create an email alert? So then you can get notified anytime there's new content added to the database that matches this search. Let's add in one more element to this search. I'm looking for some US specific content. So rather than use that geographic um, place geography uh, filter that's on the results list. Let's actually search using the subject heading of United States. The filter option is place of publication. Using the subject heading is, a, not, is a, a great way to find that country specific content. Now here we have got a subject heading here of United States and it sits under a broad heading of North America, broad heading of America, 
and a broader heading of geographic locations. And narrow to the United States, we have the individual states and we also have the regions. So for this point, you'd like to make it a very focused search. So for instance, I'm here in Boston, maybe I'd like to search using the subject heading of Massachusetts. Um, I could search using the subject heading of Massachusetts. But let's keep it broad, let's explode this term. So we're gonna search for United States or any of the individual states or regions. Click on search database and let's add that to our insulin infusion system in diabetes mellitus uh, and hypoglycemia search. Now, United States is already up here, so I don't need to select it again. So let's combine that with our search five. So I've got 23 results, so a nice focused result list. But if you are looking for the US content in here, or, you know, specific to the United States, we can very quickly access that using the subject heading. And if we have a look at the subject headings here, let's see what we have. The subject heading here, diabetes mellitus, here's insulin infusion system. Um, we've got United States as a subject heading and here's hypoglycemia. So all of the headings that we selected. So that's one way to search. There are other ways that you can search. Uh, and if you are interested in other ways, please reach out to, to Megan, more than happy to schedule another session. Or if you're available tomorrow afternoon, I'm doing a public session, um, searching using CINAHL and MeSH headings. Uh, moving across here, this is where we can see all the publications that sit in the database. So for instance, if we have a look at CINAHL complete, we can browse the publications alphabetical. We can browse by subject and description. Uh, let's browse by subject. Let's search for pediatrics. All of the titles in here relevant to the search for pediatrics. So this is where you can see that coverage that you have for a publication. Now for some titles, you'll have bibliographic records only. So the, all of the, the abstract, the author information, the source, etc., but you will not have a link to the full text. For some titles, you'll have bibliographic records and full text to present. So I can see for this title, we have full text to present. Um, sometimes you'll see bibliographic records and full text to an end date. And sometimes you'll see something that says an embargo. And embargo means that there is a delay on the full text based on publisher restrictions. So in this case, for this journal here, European Journal of Pediatrics, the, due to publisher restrictions, there is a 12 month delay before the full text of an issue becomes available. From here, you can set up a journal alert. So if you click here, you can create a journal alert. If you're not logged into your folder already, it will prompt you to log in. Um, and then you can get notified anytime a new issue of the publication is added to the database. Okay, I'm keeping my eye on the time. Um, so I do wanna leave enough time for questions and answers. Uh, moving along, just in terms of some of the additional content here in the CINAHL database, you've got evidence-based care sheets. This is what's the latest evidence around a particular topic. These, this information, uh, the CINAHL team, they do the literature surveillance, they synthesise the evidence and update these care sheets when new evidence becomes available. And they cover a range of different topics. So for instance, let's have a look at stroke. And um, let's have a look at this example here. So this is a great way to see what the latest evidence is. Now they all have the same sort of structure. Again, we've got the tools on the right hand side to work with this. We start off with what do we know about this topic? And you'll see that the information's in dot point format. So it's easy to read through, links to the references, ICD codes, author reviewer, editor information, when it was last updated based on the evidence, scrolling down the page, what we can do and then at the bottom of the evidence-based care sheets, you'll see a coding matrix. So we know with evidence, the strongest evidence is published meta-analysis. This matrix is listed in order of strength with published meta-analysis listed at the top there, the strongest evidence. And for each of these references, you'll see a letter or letters in bold. So this will help you just you know, make a judgment about the strength and reliability of that evidence. So I can see here, reference three has got SR. So it tells me that reference three is published systematic or integrative literature review. So pretty strong evidence there. They're generally, these evidence-based care sheets are generally around three or four pages long, uh, and you've got those tools to work with that. So that's the evidence-based care sheet. And another thing you've got access to in CINAHL, you've got quick lessons. Now, the, again, these are evidence-based, and these follow the nursing workflow. Uh, let's just pick up one from the list here.
So when I open up the full text, again on the right hand side, I've got the tools to work with this. We start off with the description etiology. So this could be part of maybe a learning activity, maybe a directed learning activity or an assigned learning activity or um, a self-directed learning activity. We've got information about the authors, the reviewers, the editors, when was this last updated based on the evidence, facts and figures, risk factors, signs and symptoms, and then we move through into that nursing workflow. So the signs and symptoms and moving into the assessment. What will the assessment involve? Treatment goals, food for thought, red flags, things to be aware of. What do I tell the patient or patient's family? And then your references there. So again, these are evidence-based and updated when new evidence becomes available. And the last thing I'd like to show you with the CINAHL database, before I move across to EBSCO Connect and then we open up for questions, the continuing education units. So let's have a look at the CE modules. Here in CINAHL Complete, there are 170 continuing education modules. And these are complementary with the, the resource. So there's no charge to access these continuing education resources. They cover a range of different topics. Now I've used the limiter there of, of CE module. I've got 170 results and each of these results has got a link and that's gonna direct us to CINAHL Education. Now you do need to create an account. So it's free of charge, no charge for this. Create your account. You will receive an activation email. Don't forget to activate the account. You can resend the activation email. If you lose that activation email, it doesn't arrive in your inbox. Once you've activated your account, you can log in. So I've selected this one here, it's uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. I'm accessing it through CINAHL Complete. I can see information about the authors. Um, I can go ahead and I can see information about the intended audience. Now these are designed for nurses and allied health professionals as a way to obtain certificates of completion for continuing education requirements. They take approximately one hour to complete and you can read the course materials on screen or print them out. There's a practice test or an interactive review. And you're always encouraged to do the interactive review because the questions in it are quite similar to the questions in the final test. So it gives you a bit of an advantage. And once you are ready, you can commit to taking the final test. It's a multiple choice test. And in order to receive a certificate of completion, you need to correctly answer at least 70% of the questions. When you commit to taking the final test, it opens up a 72 hour window and you can take the test a total of two times within that 72 hour window. And once you complete the or submit the test, it's automatically graded. So, you know, straight away if it's a pass or a fail and it also identifies the correct answers. But then you can move through into the course materials, read through these at a time and a pace that suits you. When you are ready, you can do the interactive review and you can also take the test from here. There's a great FAQ. So information about accreditation, when the certificates expire, how do I retrieve my transcripts? So a lot of very valuable information in here. And then also in the profile section, if we scroll down to the data preferences, this is where you can select if you'd like the email certificate to be emailed to you. And this is also where you can enter the email address of a nurse educator or it could be designee, another designee, if you'd like to be, that person to be automatically notified anytime a module is successfully completed. So if you are, say, assigning these to students, you can um, ask them to enter your email address in here and then you'll be automatically notified anytime the module is successfully uh, up, uh, completed. We have got a great FAQ and a tutorial available on EBSCO Connect about the continuing education modules. Okay. okay, so let's move across to EBSCO Connect. So this is the searching interface. There are lot, lots of different things that you can do on the searching interface. Um, let's move across to the bottom here where it says EBSCO Connect. So this is our help portal. It's definitely worth bookmarking this site. This is where you can find tutorials, FAQs, um, upcoming training sessions, plus more. And let's talk about some of the 
documents that I've mentioned in today's session. I mentioned the clinical queries. Maybe you'd like to know the search strategies used. Here's a help article. What are the search strategies used in the clinical queries? Or maybe the journal subsets. You'd like to see you know, the titles that sit in each of the journal subsets. You know, what journals am I searching when I choose a particular journal subset? There's a lot of valuable information here. Or maybe you just want to know about the continuing education units. Further down here, we've got some tutorials. Now, the beauty of these tutorials is they're short tutorials, often only one, two, three, four minutes long. And if we scroll down to EBSCOhost, so these are all of the ones that uh, for the EBSCOhost interface, one about the personal folder, using the search history, using persistent links. And if we scroll down here, here are some related to CINAHL. And here's that one about the subject headings and here's one about the continuing education modules. Now for these tutorials, there's a YouTube option, there's a Vimeo option, and there's also a PowerPoint option. Now while I remember as well, I'm just gonna go back here and I'm gonna search for learning management system. If you are interested in the CINAHL uh, education modules and you have a learning management system, there is a help article here if you'd like to download and install the CINAHL course packages to your learning management system. We have got a help article about that. And then there's also a help article about how to complete CINAHL education courses through the, your institution's learning management system. Uh, up the top here, we've also got some links to upcoming training sessions, um, EBSCO Academies, where you can find live sessions and also recorded training sessions. And there are also a number of promotional materials available here as well. Okay. Okay, so CE modules, we've spoken about those. Um, five key steps as I bring my presentation to a close. So sorry, I have gone over over my presentation time a little bit, but we have got time for questions. So five key things to uh, remember. Think about how you structure your search. Would you like to do keyword searching or subject heading searching? Uh, would you like to use maybe some of those search tips, maybe use the question mark or the quotation marks, maybe some of those Boolean operators? From the results list, you've got the facets to help focus your search and refine those results. Looking at your results list today, I used a, a one example there where I clicked on the, the full text of the article via PDF. Uh, but if there's ever an article where you don't have the full text access, please do reach out to the library and the library may be able to uh, access the full text for you. You've got the personal folder and that folder sits in the top toolbar. As long as you log in at least once every 18 months, the folder remains active. So you can save articles, images, you can manage, save searches there, you can manage your alerts from there. And then in terms of uh, alerts, you can set up search alerts via that share button to the top right of the results list. And then you can also set up publication alerts. Okay, so let's circle back to those learning objectives. So hopefully everyone's able to access the interface with ease. Um, search and locate an article of interest, maybe make use of those field options or those limiter options to help make your searching more focused. Utilize some of these special features around the alerts and the personal folder, and then know to go to EBSCO Connect. It's just, it's connect.ebsco.com. That will take you to EBSCO Connect, and that's where you can find tutorials, you can find help articles, uh, plus more. Well, that brings my presentation to a close. Thank you very much for your time today. And let's open it up for some questions. Yes, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or unmute yourself. And Cindy, I wanna thank you for that wonderful demonstration. I know even I learned a few things I didn't know we could do in those databases. So that was wonderful to see. Um, just as a reminder, everyone who attended live today will receive a certificate of attendance and the recording should be available on our YouTube page by the end. So give one more moment for questions to come in and then I will stop the recording and give the option to uh, answer questions not being recorded. Sure. So maybe I'll ask a few questions. Maybe if anyone would like to respond to those. Does anybody use the personal folder already? Well, I know I've used it myself, uh, particularly when I'm doing some research on behalf of students and faculty. I'm like, I'm gonna shove it all in here and then send them one big thing at the end. 
Thank you. Uh, any of the limiters, are there any limiters there that maybe you, you haven't used before that you uh, may choose to explore coming out of today's session? not seeing anything in the chat That's so fine. yeah I, again i want to say thank you for attending today and i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording <laughs>